Hello everyone, welcome to do electronics to embedded. I assume everyone knows about the objectives of this project as we discussed in the previous part. So now let's start with the second scenario that is implementation of an FIR filter as a software application on your super processor. Let's go ahead. We'll create a new project. We'll get the project directory. This eight project quarter software FIR. So we'll be first proceeding with the software approach. We'll be implementing the FIR filter on the NEOS2 processor using the C language. And we'll set this top level design entity as QSIS. We'll talk more about it later. Right now I don't have any of the Verilog files to be included in my project. As I'm using D1 board, I use model sim for simulation, and your quarters to project is done. Okay, so project is created. Now we'll go to QSIS. QSIS is, is basically a system building software. You can just drag and drop your system components and join them to create a system. And for our system, we'll be needing a NEOS2 processor because we'll be implementing a fire filter on NEOS2 processor. We'll need on chip memory. We'll need JTAG UART port for the communication. And we'll also need a performance counter to evaluate the performance of our design. So let's start with NEOS2. This is the configuration window for NEOS2 processor. There are three types of NEOS2 and we'll use the economical version as it is sufficient for our requirement. As you can see, there's a clock module. This is the by default included in, uh, in the design. This is a basically a clock generator. We'll need on chip memory. To be on safe side, I'll use 8192 bytes. We need JTAG UART port. Is good to go. Okay, so it's, these are system peripherals. Oh, we forgot one performance counter. Okay, so now you all can see this is the clock generator module. This is the clock being generated. This is the reset being generated by the module. We need to give this clock and reset to all the other components of our system. So let's start with clock. We'll give it to news 2 We'll give it to on chip. We'll to JTAG performance counter. Similar way, we'll give the reset to NEOS2 on chip memory JTAG performance counter. And you can see the NEOS2 processor. This is the data master, instruction master, Avalon protocol, memory mapped. So we need to connect these pins to the other peripherals. So instruction master is basically to fetch the instruction. And as you know, we'll be burning our code into the on-chip memory so we need to connect this instruction master to the on-chip memory and we only need to connect the data master to JTAG port and performance counter and there are some interrupt pins that needs to be connected now at the downside you can see a bunch of errors this is because we haven't assigned base address to any of the component in the system to assign the base address just go to system and assign base addresses so we are left with only two errors and it is because we haven't specified yet the reset and exception vector of the NEOS2 processor. So this is the reset vector we need to set it to on-chip memory as we'll be using the on-chip memory for our code. 
Okay, so we are out of all the errors. Let's save the system. Project if you guys remember, we give the same name to the top design entity while we created the project in Quartus. This is because when we will generate our system in QSIS, it will give a bunch of uh, log files and one of them will be the top file and it will have a top module. And that top module name will be this. And as we will be using the same top module for our whole design, that's why I give the same name to the top module of the Quartus project. Save it. It's good to go. So we can generate the system. So on generating, we'll get all the bedlock files that we'll, we can import in our quarters. Basically, QSIS will give you all the Verilog files and also a .qip file that resembles all the Verilog files. So you have two options. You can either import all the Verilog files in your quarters project or you can import just a .qip file in your quarters project. Okay, it's generated. So let's go with the second option. We'll import only one file that is .qip file in our Quartus project. So if you, if you guys want to see, this is the top Verilog file being generated by QSIS and these are all the supporting Verilog files generated by QSIS. So if you want to import all these Verilog files, then you need to import this file and all the files in this folder. But for now, we'll import only one file that is QIP file. This is a QIP file. So it is imported. The next task is to assign the pins. Uh, according to our system, all the modules being included in the system are into the FPGA chip. None of them is outside of the FPGA chip. So none of the IO pins are being used of the FPGA. The only pin of the FPGA being used is a clock pin because the oscillator is outside of the FPGA and will be uh, importing the clock. So we need to assign the pin for the clock. So let's assign the clock pin. It will be clock underscore, underscore clock. And the reason I'm writing clock underscore clock is because this is the name given to the clock. If you see the top design file as I showed you just now, if you open it and you see the top module will contain the clock with this name. For every pin you need to assign two things that is the location and this IO standard. Location for the clock for this particular D1 board is pin underscore L1 and the standard we use is 3.3 TTL. Let's save the assignment editor. And we are good to compile or design. It may take a bit longer. By the time we can go to news. Let's go to news of SBT fire clips. Let's set the workspace. So we are using demo software folder for project. Inside that, we can create a software folder. So this software folder will include all the C files and all the news to libraries. So we get the software folder as a work directory. So this is your news. Let's see quarters.
okay so we have successfully compiled our design in quarters now upon successful compilation quarters will give you a dot sof file that you need to burn into the board so let's burn that sof file into our d1 board so this is the usb blaster we are connect successfully connected to the board we need to add the file this is a dot sof file this is the same name we as we give to the QSS project okay so successfully burned we'll just save this dot cdf file maybe it's chain one this is good okay so the system is built into the board now we need to program the system for its proper execution so this is our neos2 let's create a new project in neos2 is new you need to create news to application and bsp from template qsys also gives you a dot sopc info file this is basically the info file which contains all the details of the system which eclipse needs to program As there is only one NEOS2 core in our system, so this is the CPU. Let's name our NEOS project as Project NEOS Software Fire. And let's set the default location. And here is the hello world template uh, there is some resolution problem that's why you can't see the whole window but there is one more template just down of the hello world it is hello world small so i'll use the hello world small template as i'm using on chip memory and it is limited so it is a small template basically it compiles less libraries and occupies less space on the system Okay, there is some problem with the project for this what you guys you can face this problem many times during your project so what you can you guys can do is you guys can create a new folder software let's delete this file from desk let's create a new folder new project sorry let's import that sopc info file again I will set the project direct as a new folder we created just now. We'll choose this hello world small template. okay so we have successfully created the project and you can see in the top folder there is hello world small dot c this is your main c file it will contain the template for the hello world this is your code now let's build this code As we already built the system on the board using the .sof file, 
now if you want we can directly build this software onto the board and that we can done we can do using run as news to hardware that we'll be doing next it is built successfully now we can run this code as news to hardware so now we'll be running this code on the news to hardware and we'll expect the hello from news to on the news to console here okay so you guys can face this window in this window you need to go to target connection you need to refresh the connections and you will see the new usb blaster you need to apply just ignore the system id and timestamp okay so it is hello from news 2 so we established a connection successfully with the news 2 processor and we are able to get the data from news 2 now we'll be implementing the fire filter on news 2 i have a code for a fire filter this is my code for a fire filter these are my input data values the coefficients these i am here i am starting my performance counter and in between i return the code for a fire filter in the, this loop and after that i am stopping my performance counter and measuring the cycles being consumed during the fire calculations now let's build this software onto the news to board now the one problem here is we haven't specified the performance counter yet this is the old one i used in one of my previous project so from qsys you can see the base address for every component so here you can see that the base address of performance counter is 5000 in hexadecimal so we need to set 5000 here just save it and run as news to hardware Here is the percentage of processing you can you guys can see is eight percent executed right now okay so we are done with the fi filter implementation you can see the fi filter output is minus 34 and the cycles consumed for this FI calculation is 173753. As you guys can see here, as it's printed, welcome to mini project 4 software implementation of a fire filter. And this is what we printed at the end. Thank you guys. For more tutorials, discussions, and other interesting videos, please visit and subscribe to the below links. Thanks a lot.